well, what can we do? I mean, that's a huge question. Um, and it's getting bigger all the time because of the increasing scale of the economy and then the notion of globalization. You see, it used to be that individual countries could determine their own fates. Um, I, I think we have to recognize that through history, many previous civilizations have risen, gone through a crisis similar to our own in some ways, and, and collapsed because they didn't cope with them well. But the collapses were local because um, of technology and, and their, at that point, relatively limited capacity to integrate ac across the planet. There are several good books on the collapses of you know, the previous human civilizations. We're the same species. and. We're no different. We're just as prone to the problems and, and uh, crises that reduced other civilizations from their peak to rubble. This time, though, we become a global culture, so it's a much bigger issue. What can an individual do? Many people think that all we have to do is convince enough people to start consuming less, living in greener buildings, and all of this sort of thing. And what people do as individuals is really important. Um, I set an example for my students in some respects. I've ridden a bike. It's my commuter vehicle. has been for the entire, uh, my entire career at UBC. I actually, this is a recycled shirt. I use the clothing I purchase uh, at the Value Village Boutique often. I can't pretend for a moment, though, that any of these individual choices to try to remain low on the totem pole have a huge effect on my eco footprint. They don't, because I also fly to give talks and presentations and workshops around the world. I own an automobile because it's almost impossible to live in our culture without one. I don't use it much, but it's there. So the impact of its, its production and consumption are on the planet. The simple reality is that individuals acting alone can achieve very little. Sustainability is a collective enterprise. If you live in a large city that doesn't have rapid transit, then you can't take rapid transit. If that city hasn't provided decent walking and bicycle paths, then you put your life at risk by attempting to do those sorts of things. So even at the urban level, the, the local level in effect, we have to realize that society at large has to be committed to a different future in which we make automobile driving, I mean, first of all, it's kind of a dumb idea in a city when you think about it. But we really need to make cities so that it's possible for people to live sustainable lives. We're not doing that yet. At the international level, we really need to recognize that in many respects, it is a spaceship Earth, that we're all on it together, and that for the first time in human history, and I think this is important, even in human evolutionary history, your individual self-interest may now equate to our collective self-interest. So whereas at any other time in the evolution of people, the Darwinian best thing might be to look out for number one first. It may now be that by looking out for number one, say the United States decides we will go it alone, they will induce a nuclear conflagration that takes them down as well as everybody else. So what I'm saying is that we have to recognize that sustainability is a, the major and largest collective issue facing humankind, that we're all on the Titanic together, that you know, if we hit the iceberg, the first class cabins are going to sink just as rapidly as the steerage cabins below the waterline. So it now becomes in the interest of the wealthy elites in Canada, the United States, Europe, Japan, and so on, to help the third world to grow to the point where the pressures are off politicians and so on to um, create the kind of economies that are going to destroy us, uh, to limit our own appropriations of the global productivity, in other words, to engage in a process of gradual redistribution of the wealth of the planet so that it's more equitable. The good news is that we could actually reduce by perhaps 75% our consumption of many things in North America, of many resources, with no change in our quality of life, simply through technology. Now, again, I'm not a huge fan of, of technological approaches here because if you implement efficiency gains alone, you actually increase consumption. But if you combine those efficiency measures 
with ecological tax reform so that you're changing other things in the economy at the same time, then there's no rebound effect that enables the efficiency to produce greater levels of consumption. My main point is that we have the resources now, we have the intelligence now, we have the technological means now to reduce resources and material consumption in the first world without significantly altering lifestyles, freeing up then resources for consumption where it's needed in the third world. But we should do this because it's the right thing to do morally. We should do this because it's in our best interests to do so in the long run. And we should do this because if we don't do it, uh, the adjustments will be made for us uh, through the increase in global geopolitical instability induced by increasing global change and resource scarcity. Uh, that's my personal opinion about this. And I think most of the evidence of the last 10 years, particularly the last 10 years, suggests that's exactly the direction we're headed in, uh, towards some kind of crisis situation um, combining resource scarcity, global change, including climate change, with increasing ge geopolitical uh, dispute around some of the issues that, that will come about. Just a, a one or two meter level, a sea level rise, for example, now entirely possible within the next century, would result in 350 million environmental refugees. Think of the tensions that would impose on global geopolitics, which at the same time is trying to counteract the effects of even further climate change and so on. I just don't see a, an easy way out of this unless we start to act now while we still have the flexibility, while we still have international goodwill, while we still have the resources to do so. Do you think